Hello, crochet lovers. How are you? I am Elena and this is Crochet Lovers, the channel where we learn to crochet step by step. A few weeks ago, we learned to make the Apache Tears or Maravilloso Crochet Stitch. As we already saw in the Apache Tears tutorial, which you can find in the pull down eye, it's very important to decide the separation we'll have between the tears. It can be a number between 4 and 10. For this bini, I chose 7, and in the other tutorial, I chose 6. And that number for separation, or how often are we going to have the tears, will be called number N for this tutorial. Let's see how to make our bini. Great, here I have all the colors that I will use. This yarn is for a 4 or 5 mm hook. I'm using a 5 mm hook. But for this project, the thickness of the material is not really that important. We'll see the bini size as we move forward. We'll begin with the base color. We make a slip knot. If you don't know the basic crochet stitches, you have the basic crochet cords for beginners on the pull down eye. But now we'll make six chains. Now we'll make a single crochet in the second chain from the hook and we'll keep making single crochets in each available chain until we get to the other side, which is going to be the width for the beanie's base. If we want it to be wider or thinner, we just need to make more or less chains at the beginning. For the next rows, we'll make a chain, turn the project, and we'll work only in the front loops from the stitches. All stitches have a back and a front loop. We'll be only using the front loops and we'll make a single crochet in each one of them. Remember, only in the front loops. This helps us create a fluted effect for the base. And we continue making the following rows like this. One chain and a single crochet in each of the front loops. So now we just have to keep working like that until the base has the same length as the circumference of our heads. And not just that, but also the number of rows has to be a multiple of our n number, which I mentioned at the beginning. My number n is 7, so I have here 63 rows, which is a multiple of 7. When we have the length and the rows multiple of n, we're going to make one chain and then we'll attach both ends of the base. Be careful so it doesn't tangle and it's completely flat. And now we'll insert the hook in the first available stitch. Now we make a slip stitch to attach together both ends and we continue attaching the stitch and the chain from the back with the slip stitch. We'll do this for all this part, for both ends of the base. We'll camouflage this thread later with a wool needle. Now we'll make one chain and we'll turn this to the inside so that the stitches remain on the inside of the bini and nobody gets to see them when we wear it. The next thing we'll do is make a single crochet at the end of each of the previous rows. So we identify the end of each row. There are some that look like a knot and there are others that look like a bigger hole, like this ones. We'll make a single crochet in them too. And we'll make single crochets at the end of each of the rows below. Perfect! Once we go all the way around, we'll close the row with a slip stitch in the top loop from the first stitch we made. And we'll verify that we have the same number of rows. This means that if the base has 63 rows, we should have 63 single crochets here. The single crochets have to also be a multiple of our number n. This is crucial for this stitch. We begin the stitch now, like we saw in the previous tutorial, which you'll find on the pull down eye. We started with three rows of single crochet stitches and then we made the tiers. So this would be our first single crochet row. We'll make two more. I'll change colors here. And since we're working in circles, we can leave the yarn here, which is what I'll do, so I can work with it later. Or we can cut it and hide it with the other end from the new color. So we make one chain to begin the new row with single crochets, 
and then we'll make one single crochet in each available stitch until we go all the way around. Remember that the first single crochet comes almost from where the chains are. Don't forget to work there. And also hide those threads so we save some work from later. We make a single crochet in each available stitch. We go all the way around and we close with a slip stitch in the first stitch we made. We create another row exactly like that one. We change colors, make one chain and a single crochet in each available stitch. This would be our third single crochet row according to the Apache Tears stitch instructions. So we close it off with a slip stitch, we change colors, and with this fourth color we'll begin to create the tears. Remember that you can cut the thread to camouflage it, or you can leave it there so we can use it later on. We'll yarn over twice to make the first tear, then we'll look for the single crochet that's three rows below, Remember that for the tiers, we'll work in the vertical loops of the single crochet stitches, okay? So we move three rows down, which is the gray vertical loop, and right there we insert the hook to create the first tier. We make our triple crochet, pretty standard, and that's our tier. The stitch that's behind the tier will be considered used. So we begin making the separation single crochet stitches in the next one. Here we'll make our number N minus 1. For me, this means 6 separation single crochet stitches. When we make those separation stitches, we create the next tier. So we identify the vertical loop where we'll be working, we yarn over twice, and then we make our triple crochet stitch. And we keep working like this. Separation stitches, tear, separation stitches, tear until we go all the way around. When we finish the row, the last separation stitch has to be right in the last available stitch. And to close this row, we just make one slip stitch in the top loop of the first stitch we made, which for now is the tear. We change colors now, create a chain, and like we saw in the Apache Tears tutorial, we make separation stitches until we need to make the tear. For this row, we just need one separation stitch because in the next one we need to create the first tear in this color. We make the separation stitches. Then the second tear and so on until we go all the way around. It's important to remember that the separation stitches in the beginning will add up to the separation stitches in the end, so we have the same amount of stitches between each tier. We can see it here. If we add up the separation stitches from the beginning and end, we have those six stitches we always do. And now we close it up with a slip stitch and continue with the next row like we always do. We go back to color gray. So we look for it among the yarn I had left here, we set it down, and make it flat so it's perfect, and we're ready to work with that color. We make one chain, and the separation stitches until we have to create the tear. We make the first tear with the color gray. And I think we know what's next because this is a pretty repetitive stitch. Once we make a couple of rows, we already know how to make the rest. Remember that the stitches in the end are added to the ones in the beginning to create the same amount of separation stitches, which for me is six. We always close it up with a slip stitch, change colors, and we continue with our work. That's how the beanie looks from the inside. And I recommend you to organize your yarn like a rotating carousel so that they don't get tangled up. Since the tears go upward diagonally, there will be a moment where the last stitch we'll need to make for the row will be a tear. So we make the last stitch as a tear, 
we close up that row. And with the new color, we'll begin the sequence again like we did with the first tier, okay? So here, we'll make a tier at the beginning. We'll just have to set it a little to the right of the project. That first tier has to be a little to the right so that it's really close to the previous one. This will be our first tier. And that's the only thing weird about this row, because the rest is going to be made exactly like we already know. So here, we'll have to work in the second available stitch, because the first one has the tier. And we make the separation stitches. Then, we make another tier, and you know how to do it all. The only tricky part was the first tier that is a little to the right to keep that diagonal going upwards. Perfect, so we'll keep growing, making more and more rows with this stitch until we get to approximately the height I'm showing you on the screen, which goes in sizes. This has to go straight up, we don't make any decreases. This goes all the way up in a straight line and when we get to the height we want, we'll cut all the threads. It has to look like this and then we'll hide them all. Now, we'll make this trap we'll use to close the beanie at the top. We begin by making a few chains until we have the length shown on the screen for each size. I have my 70 centimeters ready and now we'll make one single crochet in the second chain from the hook. Then we'll make one chain, skip a chain from below and then the next one we'll make another single crochet stitch. We have to repeat this, one chain, skip one below and in the next one, we make a single crochet. We go all the way to the other side, repeating this sequence. When we finish, we cut the yarn and hide the excess in the same strap. And finally, we'll pass the strap through the beanie's top part. We pull it through one of the single crochet stitches. Then we skip three stitches from the top. And in the fourth one, we pull the strap through to the other side. We'll repeat this, skip 3 stitches and in the 4th one we pull the strap through to the other side. We'll do this until we go all the way around so that it looks like this. This would be our cowl. If we want to close it up so it becomes a beanie, we just pull from the strap and we make a knot or even a bow. And if we don't like the way it looks, we can pull it in when we're wearing the beanie. Well crochet lovers, that's it! As you can see, it's super easy and it looks great. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so we can be in touch every week. Have a great time, crochet lovers!